Happy Friday, everyone, and welcome back to Friday Night Game Night here on Real Family Gaming. Today, I'm going to do a quick video on a fun pub-type game that can be both solo and multiplayer, and is great for game schooling as well. The game is called Shut the Box, and it looks like this. This is our copy. There are actually a lot of versions of this game on Amazon. I wanted one that had a lid, so I bought the version where this lid slides in. I mean, it is called Shut the Box, right? How do you shut a box without a lid? <laughs> really though, I just wanted to be able to stack it well in our collection and not lose the dice that came with it if I determined I needed to put it up on end. So I needed a lid. The game is very basic. I got a wooden version and it has these 12 wooden tabs with the numbers 1 through 12 written on them and a felt bottom of the box for rolling your two dice on. You will find that not all of the versions that you can buy on Amazon are alike. I found some that only went up to 9 or 10, which in many ways would have made the game easier. I preferred to get the full version that goes up to 12. As you can see, the whole game setup is in the box, so there is no game setup. So how to play this game? It's pretty simple. You roll the two dice, and let's say you end up with a 5 and a 3. You then add those two dice together, which gives you 8. Now, you can flip down any number of panels, but it must add up to the total number you rolled. So in this instance, I would flip down either just the 8, or I could flip down 7 and 1, I could flip down 6 and 2, or I could flip down 5 and 3, or I could flip down even more numbers at once and flip down a 5, a 2, and a 1. I can flip down as many numbers as I like as long as they add up to the number I rolled total on my dice. So how to win? Well, you keep rolling dice until you have either flipped down all of the numbers in your box, hence shut the box, and you win. Or you roll dice until you can't take them any longer and you lose. So if I get to the end and I have only an 11 left to get, for example, and I don't roll a six and a five, then I have lost because I can't take whatever I have rolled. The moment you can't flip down numbers to equal the dice you have rolled, you have lost. So that's how you would win in a solo game. How do you win in a multiplayer game? Well, in a multiplayer game, each person plays like a solo game, but whatever numbers you are not able to shut at the end of your specific game, that counts as your score. And then the next person plays, and all the people that you are going to play the game with takes their turn like a solo player, and the person with the smallest number at the end wins. A shut the box, of course, would be an automatic victory in multiplayer. You can even buy this bigger multiplayer-specific version of Shut the Box that allows everyone to play at once rather than to take turns passing around the box. Of course, you're limited to four players then. So let's talk strategy. So the only one real strategy I can think of in this game is how you take your dice totals at the beginning of the game. I think in general the higher numbers are harder to get, so you want to take the totals you get on the dice as one number to flip down for as long as you can because it's much easier to take a 12 later as multiple different lower number combinations, for instance, than to actually roll a 12. So there is a variety of ways to play this game other than the standard way. In our version, it also gave options for playing with multiplication included. So you could take a dice combo that is three and four and make them seven through addition, or you could make it 12 by multiplying. I would think that this would make the game easier as it would be easier to get the higher end numbers and you would end up with more shut the box scenarios. Some versions are only two number sums allowed. For instance, if I rolled a seven, I could take two and five and I could take three and four, but I wouldn't be allowed to take one, two and four. This would make the game slightly more challenging. There are optional rules where you can choose to roll only one dice if you have all the higher numbers already shut. This would definitely make shutting the whole box a little easier. And there are even optional rules that allow subtracting the dice. I think this game is ripe for people who like to make their own house rules. I'll admit, I have yet to win this game. We only bought it about a month and a half ago, and I haven't spent a ton of time playing it yet, but when I have, there's been several times where I've gotten down to the end and just have one tab left to shut 
the box, but I just don't get it. As a pub type game, though, it does what you would expect it to do. It gives you that, oh, I was just so close, let me try one more time kind of feel. And since it doesn't take long to play, you don't realize that a half an hour may have gone by as you're playing it. But it's fun and simple, so I enjoy wasting away a little time on it when I have the chance. It's a great game to leave in the middle of a coffee table and play when the notion hits you and doesn't take up a lot of space. I can also see it as a great portable game uh, to take in the car for kids on a road trip as it's pretty self-contained. It's also great for kids to practice their math skills. You can even use some of those alternative rules I talked about to work on subtraction or multiplication as well as the basic addition. It's a fairly simple casual game with low strategic elements. So if random rolls controlling your fate drives you nuts, this game is probably not for you. Thanks for watching. Please like this video and subscribe to our channel for more board gaming content. We put up board game reviews, playthroughs, how to's, and pretty much everything board gaming on Fridays. If you have some specific interest in board gaming you would like to see us cover, please comment down below. We hope you play some great games this weekend, and we'll see you next Friday.